This is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. Today's topic will be the ASC abutment, and we're going to be doing a case presentation on an anterior lateral. With this abutment, we're able to tip the implant crown channel back by 25 degrees if needed. So you can see in this uh, present case, we're tipping this back a little bit so we can idealize where we want the screw channel to be in the anterior, posterior, even in the premolars. So this is a great tool to use. If we look at the before pictures, we can see that the lateral has actually uh, got a little bit of recession. We've got a little bit of distal recession. We have a contact issue here, so a heavy contact and centric. And we also have uh, the typical pattern of this lower central being advanced. This is a telltale sign, usually for some bone loss in the lateral region. The patient was sent for a periodontal evaluation due to the 9 millimeter pocket on the distal of the lateral tooth. The periodontist recommended that the tooth be extracted and that an implant be placed to keep the bone in that particular area. So a 3.5 by 15 millimeter long noble active implant was placed. Then the tooth was temporized immediately and uh, so you can see here that there was a little gap in the mesial aspect but the patient did very well after three months. So this is at three months healing and you can see that the bone is doing quite well. The patient did smoke during that period but didn't smoke for the first two weeks. A 3D soft tissue model was poured in the pin place to check the angulation. So here we go, we're going to start to design this on the Nobel Procera 2G scanner which is a CAD CAM dentistry type of scanning equipment. So first we're going to place an implant locator on. We place this on the abutment after the soft tissue model has been removed. And this will enable the computer and the scanner to kind of figure out where this implant is on the model. So it goes through a series of uh, a number of scans and we're doing this so that we can fit this to the conical connection. So here's the platform shift in pink, the conical connection here and then inside is the hex and then the screw channel of course right here. So this connection is used to really maintain bone. So we'll start our scan and the computer's going to go back and forth and optically scan this particular model checking where this is. So it's going to go through four different scans to create the models needed to make the screw retained abutment. So it goes through that and then starts to render a 3D model. After the digital model is made, you can see the 3D nature of the soft tissues that have been picked up using customized impression copings. So we want to maintain this type of shape and create the emergence to be exactly the same as what the temporary was. So we'll use the magnetized tool to enable us to create this emergence to be uh, basically exactly the same as what the model was and which is exactly the same as what the tissues are in the patient's mouth. So essentially this is a systematic approach to creating emergence profile at the time of surgery which is really maintaining the, the emergence that was actually there from the start which is the ideal way to do it in my mind because you maintain the tissue and you'll see the x-ray when we finish this case you'll see how the bone responds to this. It's actually fantastic. So now the technician might can now start to do a little bit of his own modifications. He can turn off the magnetized tool and start to create a little bit himself. So if you're using a standard stock impression coping, you'll have to use this feature to create some emergence so that when the crown goes in, you're going to put some pressure on the tissue and the patient will kind of feel that a little bit. But if you use customized impression copings, customized uh, temporaries, you won't have those type of issues and the bone really responds so well with this. Once we have the emergence profile dealt with below the tissue, now we can use the computer tools to design a crown on the computer without even doing a wax up. We're doing what's called a virtual wax up. So pushing and pulling little points on a computer, making and designing a perfect crown shape, then using this to make our final abutment. And what we do is we use a cutback from crown tool which enables us to push one button the computer will reduce the final crown form down by 0.75 millimeters to make the perfect amount of porcelain space so you get this beautiful abutment shape that's going to be ideal for the porcelain that you're going to finish with 
Now I'm going to show you a really cool tool. This is called the ASC tool, which stands for Angulated Screw Channel. This is important because we want to stay behind the incisal edge for screw retained restorations. Plus, we also want to be able to have a proper screw channel for filling the resin. So if we came too far forward like this, you can see this would be difficult to fill with resin. So before when it was straight, you didn't have that option, but now we can pull this back and get this screw channel in the ideal spot for both aesthetic strength, for ideal placement of the, uh, the final screw. So you can tip this channel back to 25 degrees. After that, the uh, design will turn red and tell you that you've gone too far. So this is just fantastic. The minimal thickness for the abutment is 0.4 millimeters of zirconia. So we want to make sure we have that and the computer actually will stop you if you don't uh, have that thickness. It won't let you mill it. So now we have a number of factors coming into this whole particular systematic approach. We've got a noble active implant with a conical connection with a, uh, a zirconia abutment fitting on top of this that's customized below the tissue having a 3D emergence profile. It's customized on top of the tissue as well having a crown form it's based on the final crown down, reduced from 0.75 millimeters down so that we have the thickness of the porcelain to be ideal. And you get this very smooth, perfect type of structure that's going to be sent to Nobile BioCare for milling. And then here's what we get back. We get the abutment back looking exactly like we designed. And it's a beautiful abutment that fits down on the implant perfectly because of the interface. And then this is going to be um, used to create the final crown. So the technician is going to take this, add the porcelain knot, so you get this beautiful crown. And the beauty of this crown system is the tighter you do the screw, so you get down to 35 newtons, you're going to tighten the zirconia to the little abutment on the end, the titanium abutment, and this keeps it all together. So it's not relying on cement to keep it together. The other beauty of it is that zirconia and titanium are both loved by the body, so there's no inflammatory response around these two materials, which is great when you're passing through the tissue. The zirconia is actually a very strong material to use here. It has a tensile strength of 1400 megapascals, which is far above what you really need to be in the oral cavity. And look at what happens here. We're able to create an abutment that looks exactly like the temporary abutment, making this beautiful crown with the channel up the middle that's angulated having this metal piece on the end which is going to go into the implant. Now if we take this off we can look at this a little bit closer we can see it has a flat surface where the zirconia and the abutment come together and then it has a hex on the other end with the conical connection. But if we look inside of this trilobe component you can see it's rounded on this on the sides of the trilobe. This is to minimize stress on the zirconia. So this flat surface of the zirconia will sit down on this flat surface of the abutment and create a perfect system. The final piece of the puzzle is the screw itself which is called the OmniGrip screw. And it's a special screw that because it can turn in different directions as you're putting it in. So this is because of the OmniGrip driver which has a pivoting action on the tip so you can actually turn it and tighten it at the same time. And the other neat thing about this is it snaps into the screw which is very very useful when you're going around corners or trying to get it into the oral cavity. So before we go to put this in, I'd like to look at how it goes together, how it would look on an x-ray. We're going to try it on the model, see how it fits there, see the angles when we're going to put it in. Now before I do anything to put it in the patient's mouth, I always put it in chlorhexidine. Just to make sure because it's passing through the oral cavity and into the body. So here it goes. I go to put this in place. I tighten it down by hand tightening and I'm going to have a look at it. Check the color, check the contour, make sure the patient likes it. You can see the little OmniGrip screw here, the blue-ended screw. You have to use a special driver for this. So we take an x-ray. Look at the bone. This is amazing. The bone is right where we want it to be, right at the top of the implant. And then look at this abutment. It has the perfect 0.75 millimeters of porcelain around it because we planned it that way. Now we're going to tighten this down to a 35 Newton centimeter torque. And this is the recommended torque to enable this uh, screw to be in place for long term, hopefully for the rest of the patient's life. We'll put a little bit of cotton in and some resin in this particular channel, and then the patient's done.
This has been a YouTube presentation about implant dentistry.